steward of the um, contingent from the Northern Territory and I'd like to say thank you to the Industry Skills Council for inviting me to come along and to talk about our experiences of the intervention in the Northern Territory through the lens of oral health services and uh, to describe that context to you and the challenges and the opportunities that is that it has created um, in our workforce and uh, workforce from across Australia that we've drawn on during that time. So I guess just quickly to place in context um, some components of the intervention, but if you cast your minds back to the Howard government and um, the Little Children are Sacred report that was released and um, a whole range of services and funding was allocated to the Territory as a consequence of that report and um, children um, were provided with child health checks and people from all around Australia went to the Territory to do those child health checks. And as Jenny said, and one of the things that happened from that is that um, there was recognition that um, there were more than 40% um, of children who had dental caries. And that was already known in the Territory, but what it meant was that it attracted new funding for the Territory to provide uh, follow-up dental and hearing services and um, the brief was to provide clinical outreach to 73 prescribed communities, prescribed by the Australian Government, uh, to treat Indigenous children under 16 who have had a child health check or who are eligible for one. So the services were to be uh, provided by clinical outreach teams and also to provide dental treatment under general anaesthetic in hospitals. And that was the phase two project. Um, phase one was identified with the um, Australian Defence Forces and that um, going in very, very quickly. And phase two was the um, Northern Territory Government contracting to the Australian Government. So staff were employed under our DHF conditions, the same as all of our regular staff. The funding was short term. Um, the, initially it was six months and uh, that's when I went up to the Territory to work for six months and that was the beginning of last year. Uh, it's been such a dynamic project that it's rolled out very, very quickly and we've hardly paused for breath and uh, we're still rolling it out. Um, but that certainly influenced our recruitment model both for the project teams that we uh, recruited to support the outreach and the outreach models that we were looking at. So it certainly gave us um, incentive for new approaches to emerge. So it was a crisis intervention model. Um, there were high expectations, um, high demands. We had to get outcomes. Uh, we had short term and we needed uh, a continuity uh, as well and, and we had to show those results. So the models we came up with, which uh, sounded like weird at first, but essentially it was to recruit staff for three week contracts to do outreach and on our regular uh, uh, staffing arrangements. So uh, that created a whole lot of uh, things to do with um, uh, advertising, payroll, staffing, uh, registration, credentialing and, and for very short term. Um, so there were a lot of organisational challenges uh, in setting up that model. Um, communication across sectors was really essential, so working closely with remote health with, within the department, um, the hearing services who were rolling out a, a parallel program, hospitals where we were negotiating to set up um, uh, dental surgery, uh, the Aboriginal medical services, some of whom were also funded to provide similar outreach services, and of course the Australian Government, um, to which we were uh, highly accountable for budget, um, for activity and um, for our data. So there were a lot of challenges about providing, uh, collecting and providing accurate data. 
Also, there were challenges for infrastructure. We um, began the project in Central Australia and um, there were not many fixed site clinics, so we needed new infrastructure. So um, in 12 months, we brought in six um, mobile uh, clinics for Central Australia to increase outreach there. So I've got a number of um, photos in this presentation, so I'll use them to illustrate the, the points on the basis that picture tells a thousand words. So. Um, this was um, the drover that we borrowed from Queensland and the team that was um, heading out, um, not only with that drover but elsewhere. Um, this was uh, one of the vans that we leased from South Australia, so thanks to Martin. Uh, we sent one back and we still got one through to next year. It was a huge logistics um, project really um, mobilising and placing these units in, in remote places. This is one of the um, clinics that was um, purpose-built through a tender process and we've got one based in Kintor and one in Docker and uh, this is what it looks like from the outside. So uh, it was built in a shipping container, it was built in Melbourne, it was sent by rail up to Alice Springs and then put on the back of a truck to go to remote place by uh, Easter this year. Year. And so you can see that it's very secure when, that, when it's not being used and uh, also it's got the potential to be relocated to other communities. This takes us on to the um, other part of the model, which is the dental treatment under general anaesthetic. So with the teams going out, um, then a lot of referrals were being made for um, treatment under GA. And of course, there was a long waiting list. So that was part of the brief. So the model that was developed was to do a one week intensive. So often dental gets half a day once a week, once a month, uh, not very often, an offer gets bumped and um, so the waiting list increases. So we negotiated to bring in um, teams, so the Westmead team from New South Wales was really keen from the start and have provided invaluable support throughout the period of the intervention. Uh, John James Foundation from ACT has um, provided um, services to us at um, Catherine Hospital and, and Gove and are very keen to come back next year. So the goal was to treat eight children a day, 40 children in a week to fly the children in, so we chartered flights to bring in children and carers and provide accommodation and meals and arrangements and, and support um, through ALOs and interpreters and so on uh, for those children accessing care. So by the end of June um, this year, more than 300 children have had treatment under general anaesthetic and we've run 10 of these one-week intensives at Alice Springs, Gove, um, Catherine and Tennant Creek, which was our most remote location and the Westmead team um, went up there in, in March and uh, got a really great result and we're looking at going back there in the future. These are some of the... Um, uh, picks from, from some of that. These are, we had a lot of support from Darwin Hospital as well with their anaesthetists and um, they're talking with, with families. Um, our local clinicians have also um, provided treatment un, under GA. Um, so it's not only the specialist teams and part of our goals are to increase our own capacity um, by having the exposure to specialists coming in. Um, this was kind of a favourite picture that I put in there. Um, this little girl, Marjorie, had treatment at Gove. She brought in her baby emu. So that was just a real hit. And uh, we added that picture to a media release that we sent out. And this just picked up the most attention of anything, I can tell you. So um, it's just to say, look, there's a lot of hard stories. There's a lot of difficult times. But you know, in getting the word out there and raising awareness about oral health, health, don't forget the good bits and the fun bits and um, the things that people enjoy and that also attracts their attention as well.